Three Rivers Archery, your longbow and recurve experts. Today we're going to talk about fletchings and all the different styles and options open to you as the archer. Uh, so let's start off with the uh, most common question, left wing and right wing. So by the name, the left wing feathers come off the left wing of the bird, the right wing come off of the right wing of the bird. But how to identify one when they're all mixed together? Easiest way is just like grade school. Put your hands out. Uh, the left wing, where the L points to your right, when you take a feather and you face it away from you, the, uh, uh, the quill, the lip of the quill, is how to identify it. So this one points to the left. I know that is the right wing feather because it matches my right hand. Uh, same with, with all these, how it sticks out. That lip points to the right, left wing feather. Now what's the importance of that? Uh, the old belief is that a right-handed shooter needed to shoot left wing fletchings because it would spin the arrow away from the riser as it was shot. Um, what we've learned in more recent years with high-speed photography is that the arrow does not start to spin until it is in front of the bow. So it does not matter which you shoot. All you need to make sure of is that you have the same, uh, same wing feather on the arrow. You don't want to mix them in between it. Um, but in that sense, little things to consider with it is, especially with carbon aluminum arrows or anything that uses a screw and point, if it is a right or right wing and right heel cool where it's twisting that way is going to tighten the point on impact versus loosen. Now, don't trust to just that to be the case because you will still loosen points with right wing feathers uh, on, on a carbon arrow on that. Um, but just one thing you could add for it. I still personally shoot left wing. I just, how I grew up, I don't really have too much problem with it. I use other things to make sure my points stay secure. Um, and then you can mess with things like, uh, well, here's a trad vein. So it's a, a, a plastic fletch. It has uh, no heel or no, no wing to it, left or, or right, but you can uh, fletch it either way with it, and that just comes down to your personal preference. Uh, and trad veins are nice. It's if you're going to be in wet conditions in that, this is a solid, you don't have to worry about your, your feathers laying flat in weather in that. They'll stay straight and shoot, and you can shoot them off the shelf with trad veins. Um, but okay, so we got left wing, right wing out of the way. Really comes to personal preference there. Like I said, I shoot left wing. Right wing is nice uh, if you have carbons or aluminums. Uh, from there, let's talk about profile. Now, the two most common are the shield profile, which has, uh, it stays nice and steady, but the back is a little bit more pronounced, comes a curve to it, and then parabolic, which parabolic, it just follows that arc and curve the whole way, so a very clean look. Um, there are probably dozens of other profiles you can get. We sell feather choppers that have all those, so if you want to cut from full-length feathers what you like, it's great. Um, when you're considering this, other than style, what speaks to you is also surface area. And this also goes in with length, but in particular for these. So a five inch shield cut and a five inch parabolic cut, there is slightly less surface area on the parabolic. Now, when we consider that, uh, what you're using with surface area when it comes to fletch is kind of like a wing on a plane. The bigger the wing, the more stable it's gonna be. The bigger the feather, the more surface area to it, the more stable it's gonna be in flight but this also has, uh, with the wind resistance, is going to do two things. One, it's gonna slow it down sooner, which is part of having it twist and stabilize, but it's also gonna be noisier. So it can be said that parabolic fletch, or yeah, parabolic cut, is actually slightly quieter than a shield cut. But we're talking really, really minute differences when it comes to the same length and that. That's why usually for these, I personally shoot shield, just like the way it looks. Um, but for these, it goes with style. So uh, if you get into feather choppers and that and finding out that there's a ton of unique styles out there, uh, can really uh, spice up your, your arrows, your next set. Um, there's also lots of fancy ones. We've got the uh, bat wing cut here, which kind of does two ridges to it. It's kind of the balance of cutting some surface area out, but also giving kind of a double, uh, double fletch styling to it. Unique, um, you know, lots of fun, lots of good things there. Um, again, pick what meets, or meets kind of your, uh, your feel, your style. Um, now to length. So on length, uh, most common out here, we have five and a half, five inch, four inch, three inch, and two inch. Uh, biggest thing is that surface area, how much feathers on that, how big the wing is uh, for stabilizing out your arrow. Uh, Cause you can also can talk three, three fletch versus four fletch. Well, you can also balance that with this. Um, so, the 5 inch down to the 2 inch all have a half inch height, so they're going to be the same height there, where the 5 and a half, most of them are called high back. They have a little bit more height to them, so even more surface area. So, back to that surface area and how it's going to be stabilizing the arrow in flight. If you want the most stable, you're going to go with 
more fletching, whether it's three fletch, four fletch, and then also size here. Um, we see a lot, especially in past years, of a shrinking of fletch that you have on your arrow, whether it's three fletch, four fletch, but, also, or, but size also. Um, and the reason being is there's a lot more focus in these days or attention to, to tuning, having your arrow bear shaft tune, group tune, paper tune, whatever route it is to your bow, so that it is tuned to a degree that it doesn't need the fletching to help correct it and get it on target accurate downrange as much. So if you want to be able to shoot further uh, and you have a well-tuned one, you can go to smaller fletchings. So your arrow is going to still shoot accurate, but still be able to shoot far enough. Um, I've played around with it. I still stick with uh, the industry standard as a five inch, um, but I've done plenty of four inch fletch and a couple three inch fletch. And um, you know, as long as it's tuned route or tuned well and you have a nice clean release, you know, you can get away with having less fletch on your arrows. Um, so play with that. You know, it's easy enough to, uh, to strip feathers off, especially if you're using cap wraps and that. Um, try it on your next dozen. Do half of them in a four inch fletch and half of them in a five and a half. See if you're seeing a difference or if, if, uh, if you can get away with less fletch. Um, it's fun. It's great. But that does lead into the next thing, color options. As you see on the table here, tons of color options. Uh, everything from wild turkey feather here, which are great because uh, they have that natural water repellency of a turkey feather. But the biggest thing is they offer a ton of variation from fletch to fletch to fletch. Um, even on the same bird, you'll see not that unique pattern like you do with uh, like artificially barred feathers and how they are done and even different uh, brands and how they do their barred to give a nice little pizzazz. Uh, you see some here where they do uh, different dyeing to it. You have two colors to it. And then of course the solid, solid color in any and every color available out there. Um, if you're looking for a particular shade, it's probably being produced. Uh, so you can really stand out with your next arrows and have them be unique. Uh, there's even fun ones. These here, actually a spliced one, where there are three different color fletchings, and they cut the fletch from it, and they mount it to the quill of the next one, or of the original here, so on the black. And that gives just an absolutely gorgeous style to it, and, and such character to your, to your arrows. A little pricey, but man, it, it makes your arrow stand out. And that's what's great about, especially fletching your own arrows, is, is you're allowed to express yourself. You know, not all of us build our own bows or have styling like that, so there's a lot of similarity there. But with your arrows, you can stand out and be noticed. Uh, it's great when you're shooting with a bunch of friends and you go to get the arrows and they go, yep, that's, that's Johnny's arrow. Because, um, you know, it has splice fletchings to it or whatever else makes it unique. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. You know, I enjoy fletch. Um, you know, you, you go through a, a different styles for it. My current one is I like a lot of yellow on mine. I think it stands out, but also blends in come fall. So balance there to it. But, uh, but try new things. As you see here, you know, we have kind of the standard styling to it where you do a, a barred feather and then two solids. Uh, we have two sol or all three solids, but two different colors for it. And then uh, um, a wrap. And, and one thing to note, because I get this a lot, especially when it comes to length, is that will limit how much you're going to be able to put of a helical on your arrow. So when you're fletching and that shaft's uh, in the, the fletching jig, um, especially as arrows get smaller, really important to note, you can do adjustment of how much degree uh, you're going to have on there. Now with a longer feather, you're not going to be able to wrap around as much because you want to make sure that when that feather is on the shaft, that every bit of that the quill's base there is touching the arrow shaft. So especially with the progression to smaller and smaller shafts, uh, you need to make sure that that is sitting flush because otherwise the curve of the arrow and that being straight off, something can get underneath that, uh, that quill and pop your fletchings off and you'll be dealing with fletchings coming loose uh, more often than you want to. Um, but just the thing to note, at least having a few degrees of offset and just match that to it. So if you have left wing feathers, use left helical, right wing fletch, right helical, you do the straight, pick any way you like. Um, but that's it. Now, if you have any questions about fletchings, uh, whether it's turkey feathers, uh, uh, veins, whatnot, please comment below. Be happy to answer them. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you really like the video, please hit that share button to share with your friends and family. I'm Jonathan Karch with Three Rivers Archery. Thanks for watching.